Kamala Conkins and Cat Devoni here, yet again for another Trek Yards Mission Briefing, as you guys know by now. And if you don't, where have you been? It's your win Wednesday, weekly Wednesday, trying to say both words there, weekly Wednesday discussion show. We take a look at a ship station, anything really of the Trek universe, discuss, theorise, and go from sort of a place of basic knowledge and try and reach a heightened state of conceptual knowledge until the final episode left down the line. Um, but Stuart, what are we doing today? A uh, ship designed by John Eves for Enterprise. And that would be the Klingon Raptor. That's exactly right. That one right there. So yeah, Klingon Raptor, guys. This is quite a highly requested one. Um, and the fun thing about Enterprise uh, era ships, and especially Klingon, is that we don't know when they sort of started the commission date. Um, whereas we talked to Johnny's about the Enterprise Bird of Prey, he said it's probably a newer ship. So we don't know when the ship was, how old the ship is in Enterprise. It could be brand new, brand not new. So it's an interesting one where it could be. Um, but yes, so first picture, and just disclaimer, guys, as we've you know started doing track cards quite a lot, we we're trying to be the most documentary style show we can be, getting you the best content and the most informative. And so these are some fresh renders we did of the model using the show. So this is the canon details, and so as opposed to a lot of other mission briefings, we're theorizing based on fan stuff. I believe almost every picture here is a genuine model picture. So theorization about the actual thing, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Awesome working on Trek Yards because we do get the, these kind of things, and the detail on this is incredible. Mm. I actually really like this ship much more than much more than the uh, uh, other Enterprise Klingon ships, personally. But as we always do, go back to day one. So this was in, I believe, only one episode of Enterprise um, when it's stuck in a uh, grab a, a gas giant style situation. Um, they they really, you really get didn't really get to see the ship fully. But what did you think when you first saw it and? Um, yeah, any thoughts? Well, I thought it was very, very sleek looking. I'm going to mm -hmm. steal your line there. It's sleek looking. You're more um, than welcome. And it's it... rad. It's rad that you can steal. <laughs> there you go. And uh, it's it, it has one of the Klingon ship features that I really like about uh, the, the Bird of Prey is the upswept wings. When it's either mm. when they're straight out in attack formation or flight formation, sorry, or when they're up for landing, I think that looks a lot better. Mm. And this one incorporates the upswept look, which I really liked. And it's kind of it's kind of a departure from the Klingon uh, aesthetic, but I really like it. So I, I remember being impressed with this ship. It doesn't have a lot of the rigging and stuff. Well, it does, but not as much as like the uh, what's the other one? The Bird of Prey and the D five. The D5, that's the one I was thinking of, yeah. Um, so this one looks actually like a newer, more advanced ship than the D5, mm. so thumbs up. Uh, Johnny does a great job, as always, so it I was really happy does. seeing it. Yeah, I remember it leaving very little impression on me when I saw it in the show, and I only really getting a real feel for this when the Drex Files pictures, I, I, I started seeing those, and then when we see it in Axnar, cause he, there's, there's a couple of shots um, with it, or Prelude, should I say. And it's, it's a strange one, because I, I, I think it's got... Klingon-esque features, but it's clearly of an earlier era because it wouldn't necessarily be Klingon, if that makes sense. Like it does feel like a precursor to the things we know and love. Like it hasn't got mm. well other Klingony things, um, but it has got some. Like this bridge module is very much its own thing, you know. Um, although that actual bridge bit, bridge bit, I think, is basically the thing on the Katinga. I think basically the exact same detail, which I quite like. Um, yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. But it's, it's a really interesting design. It's a very... I think this, we'll see scaling later on. It's quite interesting how... you know it, it feels quite small to me. But it's quite an interestingly sized ship. But it's certainly... It's it's not an aggressive looking ship. I don't think. It's more... Workhorse. A bit more... You know... Um, the rugged space spaceship of the Clone Empire. Rather than a battleship. Rather than an attack ship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The all-in-one multi-purpose ship. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that leads us into the next picture because you're just talking about scaling. Mm. So we see it here beside the NX. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not as big as the NX. Um, well, none of the Klingon actually, ships. Is... None of the Klingon ships of the era are as big. And X one's actually kind of bigger than all of them. Yeah, that's true. How big is the NX again? Do we know? Two hundred twenty-five meters. So it's about one hundred eighty okay. then. Nice. But, it, I mean, we know the Klingon tech's more advanced, so you've got smaller warp engines that I'm sure provide more than warp 5, or at least warp 5, which, or should I say the coils, which has a bit more advanced technology mm. there. But how many people do you think this would have on? Because 
That's what I was just going to say, because a lot of the Enterprise crew are, of course, in this, well, all the Enterprise crew are in the saucer section, um, and that's quite a surface area. This one has very little, so I don't even, like, I would I would speculate a small crew, 40, 50. Yeah. I mean, comf comfortably, but Klingons don't, they're not for comfort, so. <laughs> I mean, the NXL one's like 120, and it? it's pretty, pretty small, 120, 150. Yeah. But if you look at the bridge module, and again, these, these are the real models, that is the cannon scale, that's how they were built. That bridge module, and we know exactly how big that is, and if you put that towards the size of the, of the uh, Raptor, I mean, that's, mm. that's a, what, two bridges wide? The, the head bit? That, that's, that's, that's just two rooms. If you think of just a, a church hall, it could just be sort of that wide. I mean, that's not big and we know mm. we're i think it's fair to say we know what, what the bridge looks like <laughs> um what well, if we do actually see the bridge although and it's a little bit different but it's probably got most of the same bridge -isms as the as the um all the other bird of prey style versions um but it, it like how much bridge is that a new word now <laughs> it's a trek yards word there you go. <laughs> um but how much like in the klingons you, you always define as a warlike race how much mm -hmm. function do you think the ship really has with that smaller ship? You know, it's a good question. Like, yeah, what would it be used for? It can be used for cargo. Um, mm -hmm. Doesn't have a lot of weapons and emplacements like the Bird of Prey does. Mm -hmm. Nothing really mm -hmm. visible. Um, but I think it's got much larger engines than both the Bird of Prey and the D five, though. And there is a picture flat in, in a little bit. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so really. A transport, a, like not not even a scout. It, See, it's... I, I would I would go frigate, part of a part of an attack fleet. You know, you have a squadron of these potentially going yeah. after a target. You an know. escort, yeah. Yeah, where you, what what weapons does it even have? I mean, we know it has torpedoes because we see the music in the show. I think all these probes, but you're right. I mean, it's missing uh, the aft or the, the bottom turret, which I don't think would necessarily work on this design anyway. So I'm kind of glad they don't have it. I don't know. It, it's if you're a Klingon warrior, think Klingon, would you feel dishonor to be in a, a ship this badly armed? Or would it just be a, a good stepping stone to go from, you know, something around Kronos to the you know, to an outer, an outer colony ship? So as far as a mission profile goes, I mean, putting myself in a Klingon frame of mind <laughs> might be difficult. <laughs> but um, to be assigned such a small little ship depends on the mission profile. So if you're, a, if you're escorting larger ships into battle, mm. it might be honorable. To mm. kind of be not well, you're protecting your your main commander or general or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is a yeah, it is a it is a stepping stone, so to speak. You're kind of a foot soldier. This is probably mm. your first assignment. Um, but really, what are you going to be doing, warrior wise? I mean, is this ship full of engineers? Um, you know, like, are there many warriors on board? Because you know, ships don't need warriors to operate. They need qualified crew, right? Yeah. Yeah, but we I mean we just saw an episode of DS Nine with with uh, Martok taking charge of his Bird of Prey game for the first time, and you know, everyone's got their set position, you know, being tactical, being a science, being a uh, helm. But they're all warriors. I mean, that's just the the class they're in, the warrior class. But they're all subdivided, so I'm sure there's just engineers and and you know, everyone does their own job. Do you think this might be like a scientific uh, profile because it is such a smaller ship and bet, less heavily armed? The, the problem with smaller is that it's it's small, but all the ships are smaller. Like it's not much smaller than the rest of the ship. It's not. It's not a scout ship size. It's not. It's not a Borel size within the, within a fleet of Vorchars. Like it's just mildly smaller. So, yeah, I, but I, it's not. It's not as heavily armed either. So that well, gives me... it might have disruptors, well, hidden places. I mean, it doesn't have the obvious cannons, but it might have, you know, the newer hmm. disruptor tech. You know, uh, we. I don't think we know. Well, that's asked John. I mean, I, I'd love to know what it was in the script. You know, what sort of class of ship it was. Um, but yeah, we well, do, speaking okay. of size, like with yep. the Klingon fleet, we might as well go to the next picture then, right? Mm -hmm. Next picture, we got it compared to the other ships. And yeah, you're right. The D5 is not much bigger at all. And that's the battleship. That's the that's the toughest nails ship of the whole fleet. Yeah. It, it always hmm. surprised me how big the Bird of Prey is compared to the other ones. I mean, that really is a, is a more battly ship. You know, they really kept that uh, strong. So really, it, it's kind of just like you've got the, the extra arm. Because you can tell... That the D5 is a much bulkier, it's got higher armor. So I, my my impression of that photo is, the D5 is the armored, you know, big guns. The Bird of Prey is this smaller, thinner, more maneuverable, lots of small guns for heavy fire, not necessarily to last. 
and the Raptors the in between is is a ship that sort of can last but also do other do other things. And the interesting thing is, look at the size of the warp coils going up to the Bird of Prey. Bird of Prey's got like the biggest ones. Those well, those sections on top. I don't know if they're the warp reactors or the the nacelles per se, mm. or where the warp coils are. But I mean, the, the, it's almost a step up from the Raptor to the D five to the Bird of Prey as far as size goes for those. So does that suggest that the Raptor is the slowest out of the three as well? I'm sure there's more. I'm but sure then, there's. But then again, the actual the actual warp nacelles on the wings are bigger. I'm I'm sure there's refitted ones and whatever. I think, I think we don't know. <laughs> I think probably keep up with most <laughs> things. That, at least it's faster than X01. Um, but in terms of uh, continuity, I mean, you've got the very familiar shapes of the Bird of Prey. You've got the very familiar, roughly very familiar shapes of the D5. I mean. We rarely get to see different Klingon ships, really. They're always very, very similar. But does it fit in? I mean... It does look different, like we've both kind of said. I mean, with the upswept wings and even the place, the way the nacelles are attached to those pylons, mm. um, they're not cantered down or, you know, like most Klingon designs. So, yeah, maybe it is... <sighs> an earlier ship or one that's a collaboration with another maybe that's the Romulan uh, vessel that got <laughs> traded I, I don't know um, yeah I, I guess it's a sense. tough call but it is it is a little different than most Klingon ships we've seen so yeah I think this is I think it's an early design that would be my that'd be my guess um, but it, do, it does have if you look at the comparison it is actually kind of a combination of the two you can definitely see links you know the neck of one the, the top bit of another mm. like there is distinct visual connections um but yes we wish we'd seen it more because it's a very interesting ship and to really get a sense of its role and its strength i mean we know that a bird of prey can take out the nx01 we know the d5 can take out the nx01 well, what can this do again just talk on. I, I just had a revelation though i just Ooh. realized that there are no nacelles on the wings of the bird of prey that's why the things on the back are so much bigger because mm -hmm. that would be the warp coil placement mm -hmm. um I was basically earlier just talking about, I thought that that main section at the back was the main warp reactor and providing the power. So it looked just so, it so much bigger towards the bird of prey. But now I see that that's actually where the warp coils would be for the bird of prey. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not in the cell ends. That's awesome. Hmm. Well, the red, the, the, the red bit's the facade, isn't it? Facade collectors. Yeah, well, yeah. But anyway, let's go on to the next picture, which compares the Raptor with newer ships. And it really does show how ditzy the Enterprise Zero sizes were. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can imagine that versus the Galaxy would be like, yep, nope, not impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, this is the same size as the Burrell from Star Trek Three, basically. Yeah, if you rotated it, it'd be about the same uh, lengthwise. But yeah, it, I, there must have been something that made the Klingons think, right, we're going to keep bumping up our ships. You know, because that, that's some serious size differences. I guess, to keep in line with the Federation, because they keep bumping their size, I mean, the Excelsior to the refit, it's just like, hmm. It's like, guys, stop it! We can't keep making our ships bigger. Just keep it small. <laughs> but it's interesting, because obviously the, 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 the problem with this sort of comparison is that the, <laughs> that the newer canon timeline ships are based on older physical technology to build a ship, so they're boxier. So if you look at those the D7, it's all boxy shaped. You look at the Vorchar, a bit more sleek, but still some simple curves. And then you look at the Negvar, sort of in between. Whereas the Raptor, everything's a sleek curve. And that's just because it was made in CG newest. So it's kind of interesting that, mm -hmm. the, that the Klingons, in this strange continuity universe we have, went from a certain technology and then simplified the shapes and went back into complicatedness. Because it's so much more sleek than, <laughs> than other ships of later <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help yourself, could you? Wow, well, you know. Um... <laughs> I know what you mean, though. That's and that's the whole uh, the whole conundrum and problem that with that enterprise does crop up with is the, you know, the messing with the timeline thing. But yeah, it makes sense from a design standpoint um, for the era that it's designed in, mm -hmm. and in our time, I mean, not mm. not the, the Starfleet Star Trek universe, but to be more sleek, as it were, now. 
than back okay. in the 60s. So yeah. anyway, let's go into the next picture. And that is <laughs> uh, by John Eves. It's his concept art, which as always is incredible. I love looking at his concept art. Hmm. Eves dropping with Johnny Eves. <laughs> this feels very different to me. Roughly very different. Like the, it, I mean, if you look at the real one, it's it's much more something. This one, everything's much more pulled back as if it's been stretched. Whereas mm. this one, it's much more boxy. It just casually goes up. The other one, it pulls further. The head's much more pointy. This is much more curved. Mm -hmm. That that one feels a bit more like a faster frigate, whereas this one doesn't. This one's a bit more of a casual atmosphere. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that could be a fast frigate or a Corvette or something. Mm. Um, yeah, but that happens a lot with the... We've heard about this from our designers, even mm. Andrew, um, that when, you know, from the concept drawings, once they get handed off to the model makers or mm. the CGI guys, uh, a lot of times they just do their own thing. And Johnny loves the additions they make, usually. Uh, so, I mean, his concept art here, the back of it, almost looks like could be from a Batman film. <laughs> Looks like the bat wing. It's got the two little ears and mm. yeah, bat, bat like wings. Anyway, uh, off topic, but. But the next photo is a extreme close up of the bridge module, and that is a hell of a lot of detail. Um, they really went to town on mm. what on earth is there. I mean, what would you make of this, Chilets? <laughs> well, <laughs> um,. Is that the deflector, that red part at the front, possibly? I assume so. deflector. Yeah. Or sensors. I would assume so. Or it's a Cylon. Yeah. Yeah. Or a new yeah. kit from Knight Rider. Yeah. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom. Michael. Um, well, it has that It has that very 1960s Romulan, or not Romulan, Russian, sorry, Russian feel to it that Johnny likes to incorporate mm. into those older Klingon designs, especially around that bridge with those supports. Mm looks very mili like Russian military so I don't know I just and the, the texturing on the hull is also kind of reminiscent of um, Romulan design again um, those plating I, mm. I think it looks like feathering almost mm. yeah I, but, uh, yeah I'll say that I think though this might have benefited from having the two cannons either side like the bird of prey did I think that's a later addition to the show than this one so they probably invented that yet but that would have been very natural, I think, here, to, to give it that extra punch. That's kind of what I was just going to say. I was looking at that side part thinking that. Um, yeah, but to add a few weapons that are actually visible would have really helped this ship out. All right, so let's go into the next photo. This is from hmm. the back. Well, it does have the red bits kind of in those in the warp cells there. Very minimalist, um, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um one thing I noticed when I was, when I was zooming around the model to, to make these is that if you look at the... Well, I can show you on the physical model. Um, this physical element, there's little bits at the top of the top. Um, mm -hmm. It's literally an antenna. On the actual model, it's literally just like pylons that looks like an antenna. Mm -hmm. not really sure why it's there, but it's there. It's for good good TV reception, don't you know? You need you need Klingon Opron cable. Yes, KTV. Yes, keep the, MTV, keep KTV. the troops happy with the opera, yeah. <laughs> um, and do you think that's a docking port next to it? Possibly, or warp core ejection. Maybe that's where the Ooh, warp core that's a good shot. gets inserted or removed as needed. I know obviously the D7 has no obvious weapon ports. Um, do you think it has those tip mounted disruptors? I'm trying to look at the hull detail and there's... just vis Visibly, there's not really much i mean what, what, do you, what do you think offhand i would say yes it does have it um but just because the d7 like you said is still playing at the front but it obviously has those there yeah but these you know and it's a klingon ship so we you know you have to have your weapons and we're, we're better to come from than the wingtips mm -hmm. so my first guess to be yes as for seeing any physical details that show that no <laughs> not really do you think that the um the little uh, put pull out details at the either side of this raised section. Do you think those are disruptor mounts, possibly? Like the Dideradex has those turret elements, maybe? Possibly, yeah. Um, they actually look like old-fashioned thermostat wall-mounted <laughs> things. Or a yo-yo slapped on the side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, it would make sense that they're kind of a rotational deflector of some kind, kind of get some different firing arcs out of that. Because that would be... And plus, it's, it, would, it would be leaked right in with the warp core there, mm. where all the power is coming from. So that might make sense. Because that would be pretty, actually, in terms of uh, firing arc, you've got the front main disruptors, the powerful beasts that, you know, plugging right into the coils, and then, you know, it can keep firing either side as it rotates and goes past and then fires off torpedoes. That would be quite a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And you got your upper dorsal arc covered yeah. as well because you can fire straight up and stuff. But yeah, that would make perfect sense. Well, this, I mean, I, I, I said before, John uses the um, Russian pylon supports, yeah. and it's got a very distinct, very thin support mat on my oh. physical eagle moss. Like whenever you play with it and you know, fly it around, they're so small you don't you don't want to break them. But it feels so redundant to have this one along that part of the wing, like. It's a big wing. That is a big, strong wing. And if, it, if it's strong enough to be in space and go through warp, I think it doesn't need that single support. Like, I get the neck for the bird of prey. That's fine with me. That looks so redundant, it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's kind of what I said when we've had Johnny on before about the rigging. I'm not a huge, 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 huge fan of the look of it, just for that reason. It seems almost not needed. It's redundant. Um... It's a great visual look, but when you actually apply it to what would it actually do, it just kind of falls apart for me. Yeah. So not a huge fan of that addition by him, but. But the next photo is the aft, and this is where they it really pops with color. I don't think we ever got to see this in the show, this angle. Mm -hmm. And you've got, I mean, you've got the blue elements and red elements so what is that saying that the impulse that's got s okay what do, what do you think what do, when you see this shot how much stuff is glowing which always represents something what do you think <laughs> well i don't think any of them are weapons parts because they're odd shapes they're squares and mm -hmm. rectangles well i do believe that circle in the middle of it all is a torpedo launcher yeah that would make sense yeah um but it's not lit up um, well, it, it isn't on the think... five either. Um... Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It doesn't light up until the, the hatch opens and it's firing. Mm -hmm. um, off uh, first thought out of my head would be that the top ones are the impulse engines. But then knowing what we, we know about like the refit uh, Enterprise and whatnot, I would say the squares beneath the torpedo tubes would be the impulse engines. Maybe the top ones are cooling vents of some mm -hmm. sort to speed off heat from the reaction. As for the bottom, I don't have any idea what those ones could be. Unless those are disruptor mounts on the bottom and those are, again, the back to cool off the cannon after it fires or something. Interesting. And then what about the blue? No idea. <laughs> no because idea. You know, we, we did say how little red there was on the... On the theoretical nacelles, theoretical coils, well, what if the coils are the blue elements? Well, that being said, if you look at those blue elements, right above them looks like doors that mm. can actually close mm -hmm. on each set. So, again, those could be to, to dissipate heat, but mm. blue doesn't indicate to me heat, ever. <laughs> um, mm. I have no idea. I just... We really need to talk to John about this ship, because... Well, we are. but like you just pointed out, they don't necessarily even have... John might not have even drawn the back, so these bits might be totally the, the models. I'm not sure who, who built this one. But the, seeing this definitely gives you a sense it's a very fast ship. It's got a lot of engines. If they're all engines, take that as, as, as what you will. That's a lot of thrust going to a relatively small vessel. More than D5 by a long way, more than the Bird of Prey. I mean, this could be the real manoeuvrable ship of the fleet, which I think would, would make sense, you know. It doesn't need them to firepower because you can dodge shots, you can get in close, you can fire main disruptors. I mean, maybe. Because that's a lot of individual pieces. Don't know? Yeah. I also I have a question for you. Right oh. beside those blue parts uh, yep. near the middle, yep. it looks like obvious disruptor turrets of some kind or weapons. Oh, yeah. Huh. Do you think those are rear-facing rear disruptor turrets? I would hope so. <laughs> Um, that that's really interesting. That would be a great way of, like, say, the vents. That because we know that in some later Klingon ships, that's a big thing. But obviously, we can see lots of other vents around that aren't lit up. But yeah, that'd be a great, would be a great shout to have. Um, then indeed, be more well armed than other ships at the time, possibly. 
Because maybe this is this is purely disruptors and torpedoes rather than having cannons. Yeah. And you know, and also, you know how you said it was kind of a, looked like an earlier design? I think, I disagree. I think it's a later one. I think it's smoothed out a lot of the textures that the, uh, well, the Enterprise Air Bird of Prey has. Mm. Got rid of, rid of a lot of the rigging. Mm. And I think it's, I think it's one step closer to the, the smooth sleekness that we see of the D7 in TOS. Mm. Um, so I think this might be actually a newer evolution of the ship designs. That's no, I mean that's really interesting. I mean they would that would say something about having the bridge module being so similar to a D seven or a Katinga. A very natural step. Um Yeah, I mean absolutely that's that's yeah, I can buy that. And then that would also go with the the, the tip mount disruptors, again that one step further. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You've just completely turned me around on that. Yay. And so our fans will watch this show and at the start comment, no, Sam, you're wrong, it's a later ship. And they'll be like, oh, you said that later on. Damn, I should probably just watch the full episode before commenting. <laughs> Which happens quite a bit. All right, so the next photo is from Star Trek Online. Yes, and they obviously make variations of these ships. Basically the same, but a little bit different. They've still got the rigging. 2409, the Klingons still need rigging. <laughs> what does that say about the Klingons? <laughs> yeah, don't know. <laughs> Um, I haven't uh, played a lot of Klingon campaigns and stuff in Star Trek Online. Have you? Have you used this I've ship at all? I've played or? Bird of Prey for about three missions. Yeah, me too. The one you start <laughs> off with, and it was nice. Yeah. But you had to turn and fire. I, I love having cruisers in Star Trek Online, having multiple phaser arcs, so I can just keep banking to the side and firing both aft and forward yeah. phasers. That's what I do, because it damages them very well. Klingons aren't yeah. my style. Um. Yeah, this one has less like greeblies and stuff on the the mm. front section there on the side. It's kind of smoothed out. It does make it and feel the bridge a bit module. Newer. Yeah, the bridge module seems to be a little bit more integrated in, like into the curve. Yeah. So. And I do like. I, the... I actually I actually really like this upgrade. It yeah, it is one of those simple cleanups because that's, that's what they always say. Well, we say with when it comes to TOS, you know, they really took out the detail to make it simpler and smoother and that's the evolution technology i do like though the addition of the much much more obvious warp nacelle areas at the other side of the um yeah wing mounted whatever that's actually quite nice i like that as a visual cue yeah, yeah. does it look like there's a docking port on the uh, front part there that black section on the side it looks like maybe a yeah one of the uh, yeah sure. one of the little um Travel pods could attach yeah. to that. Be a good place to have it. Yeah. Cool. Mm. And the next picture is just an artsy picture we found um, of the battle damaged or rust damaged raptor in a nice little nebula. Um, although, actually, if you look at the side of the nacelles or whatever, there is that black element that might just not be lit, whereas in the Star Trek Online version it is lit. Because if you look at the detailing of the red section, mm -hmm. it looks exactly the same, just about. Maybe it's only lit when it's in warp. Oh, no. Yeah, well, we've never seen it at warp, and we do the full episode. I will do it at warp, so we can ask John in the episode and say, "Should these be lit up? If so, I'll, I'll turn them on." It's like with the Galaxy class model; both impulse drives exist as part of the model, but they don't normally have the source or impulse drives on. But you can turn them on, like you can. Well, you can change. We can You have to change the modeling elements to make them red. But you know, what I mean, as that might just be uh -huh. a thing we can do for it. But yeah, that is the Klingon Raptor. Quite an unusual, but I think. Works well, Klingon ship from the Enterprise era. Any closing thoughts on her ship? Lots of questions came up during this episode, so I'm looking mm. forward to speaking with John specifically about that. Mm. And like, it's it's up in the air whether it's an older design mm. or a step towards the newer TOS design mm. that eventually evolves, which is less cluttered with yeah. rigging and whatnot and more smooth, sleek surfaces. So it's a very cool looking ship. I really like it, and I, I love the upswept wings on the Klingon yeah. designs. So, that's all I have to say. I think this is one of those ships that it, it was given so little time in the show it was made for that, that we should bring John in. Not just say, what did you think at the time, but ask these questions and see if we can develop new information about it with the man himself. Because I think this ship deserves that and we can do we can do that, which I'm excited for. Because I mean, it's one I'm sort of not meh on. It's, it's interesting, but it hasn't really come to its own for me. I think we can do that. I think we can really give it a, a new life. So, looking forward to that day. And that is my last thought, Stuart. Good. We're done. Bye. 
Oh, no, after, oh, the, after the Flextra, let me do it first. And that is it for this week's Trek oh. Mission Briefing, your weekly dose of Trek discussion. If you want to support the show, either go over to our uh, website at www.trekcars.com and click on the donate button and help us out. Or if you want to be a regular supporter and really help us actually make the show and keep it coming to you, it is a long time, then go to our Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash trekyards and pledge and give 10, 50, 200, 300, 5, $10,000 a month, whatever you want. Be great. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, just just watch the show. Also supports us as well, and obviously put, watch it if you want to see in the comments below. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and look forward to next week's episode of Trackyards. Until then, it's Commander Kongs. And Captain Foley. We will see you next time. Bye, guys. Kapla. <laughs>